Um, so with a more complex object like a tape dispenser, you're still working with the box concepts. And since you have a given box, which is the ground plane, right? So you're never gonna you're never gonna lose the ground plane. So remember last time we were talking about drawing through forms? So because I know how to draw a, a ground plane, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the ground plane. If I don't quite know how to draw all these weird funky angles and curves, like, you know, that doesn't matter as much. So this isn't gonna be a vertical, it's gonna be a little tilted, right? Off of the off of that. And then this little ridge right here is gonna be the same parallel as the as the ground plane, even though these little planes are inclined a little. See that? And then from there, I know that the that this line parallels this bottom line. So I know that somewhere up here it's gonna recede to a vanishing point. And then I have to I can't kinda this this has to kinda curve a little bit so I can't like exactly make things vertical. And you know the overall shape of this is still something like that, right? So I wanna I do want to make sure that I block in that overall and not go like very too carefully from section to section, right? And I know that this is going to go there. So you see that start to emerge, right? The overall mm -hmm. form of it. And so what you're trying to do is think in terms of in, in terms of form rather than in terms of anything else, shape or whatever. So I want to knock in, knock in forms, primarily. And then remember that the, your circle in perspective is just an ellipse, right? And that it can either be one of two ways. It can either be pretty much vertical or horizontal. And so your ellipses can go this way too. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they don't really adhere to to two point perspective at all because it's an ellipse and it has its own kind of rule set. So from here, what I want to do is I want to check proportions. So I can use setting and measuring. I can hold out my my arm at its full length and just kind of measure certain things, right? So I can measure the overall width of this and compare it to the height. So I know that the width is just slightly longer than the height. So I know that I might need to go up on the height a little bit. So I've kind of, I've kind of made a mistake, right? But I can immediately adjust to start to refine the proportions a little more. So this is why you draw soft in the first bit, so you can so you can make adjustments, and then I can then I can measure again. I can measure like the height of the front compared to the height of the back, and the height of the front from here to here is actually the same as the height of the back from here to here. So I know that the height of the back has to be right here. Weird, huh? Wouldn't expect that, but visually it's it's kind of how that's kind of how how it works sometimes. And I just want to make sure that I get that curve nailed down nicely, or the straight part and the curve. Remember, they will recede to their own vanishing point way off in space because they're on an inclined plane. So if I were going to do a value drawing, I'd pretty much leave this where it is right here. And then the next stage, um, what we're talking about really is blocking in, right? So I'd add in a little bit of shadow, just kind of indicate where that is. And then basically this whole thing is dark, right? So I'd go over the whole thing, except for the tape, and just make it dark. And eventually with enough marks, see I can still see my initial gesture, right? My initial setup.
Like I haven't lost track of that even though I've made this whole thing dark. So then what I want to do is figure out where deeper darks are. There's a deeper dark along this shadow and this shadow, right? There's this little section inside is pretty dark. So at the end what I, what I do is I commit to the outline, right, and the contour of the object. But I don't do that until I've done this loose blocking. So my teacher, his stuff looks in like 17th century Dutch oil paintings, but they're done in acrylic, and all of his drawings look even messier than this to start out. <laughs> you know, so he like he has this crazy messy initial style, followed by um, a very controlled finishing uh, finishing technique. And basically, like the way a drawing works is you is you build up layers. You know, so. Just like in Photoshop, how you have layers, here you have layers. And any mark you make just shows off your personality, you know? So, you know, just like in life, you never hide your personality, so in drawing. And every time I create a darker value, it creates room for more values that I can, that I can add, right? I call that pushing pushing values. Um, I don't know if that's like the correct technical term, but so I haven't pushed any really dark values, but I know that there is a dark value down here, so I can start to push that, right? I know that this value is pretty deep, so I can start to push that. And this value is pretty deep too, so I can push that. This little line is pretty dark, so I can push that down. So now that I've pushed values, I can, I've made room for a greater value range, right? So now I see that this dark is not dark enough, so I can push that again down another, another notch. And this is something you want to work in, work on in both drawing one and two, for real. This is, this is a big, big important concept. And then, if I mess up at this stage, you know, I can always use my eraser as a drawing tool. Like, I kind of forgot to have that plane there. So I don't need to completely erase, because I know that I'm going to deposit value here again. And that's what this is all about. And here you can actually just draw over the edge. And over over like a six hour process on this, right, you can just keep drawing, drawing over the edges and not being too careful. And then at the end, that's when you tighten up, right? That's when you bring in the line. So really what we're working on is like the first three or four parts of the process. Um, is staying loose, doing a gesture, um, measuring, making sure you get the overall proportions. And then the next step for value is you block in, right? And it only takes three values to define a form. And every time the object has a plane change, it has a new, another value every, every time. So if you see on the object that there's a plane shift, you know in your drawing that there must be a value shift. If you see a value shift in your drawing, that indicates a plane shift on the object. So you can check yourself in that way, right? So like if you go around a corner and there's no value shift, then you know you've screwed up, right? So it's like a, a really easy way to self-check, um, which I love. I love things like that, self-checking in drawing. Because once you're out of this class, you know you're not going to have me around as your crutch. You're going to have, you know, yourself and online tutorials, basically, <laughs> or other drawing teachers should you wish to do that. You can see this is starting to take a little bit of shape and dimension. And you don't actually need line to define edges of stuff, you just need a, a shift in value. And when you try to determine what value to goes where, you can squint at the object and get a relative picture of the overall value. Or you can use a value scale, right? So a value scale is little hatches that go from 
you know, dark to light. And you can almost do a draw by numbers thing here, where you can create 10 values, or whatever, number them like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then say, well this, on this object, this is a 1, this is a 5, this is a 7. And then you can actually, you know, put notes on your thing like 5, 7, 10, etc. Right? And actually write them in and almost do your own sort of like draw by numbers thing. Um, and that way if you don't have time to like finish off a drawing, uh, like, like you have, like you gotta go, someone's moving, you can just take note, notes on your drawing as to what value goes where, and that'll help you if you need to finish it later. Um, so yeah, just use the value scale logically, right? So like, I haven't really gotten to this, to like, deep, dark value, right? Like a nine, yet. But I know that there's like a nine here. So once I get the, once I get the nine in, Then, this opens up, again, another value range for this to go just a little darker, right? Because the distance between this value and, and this dark value is smaller than what I've drawn so far. And then, if you find that your paper texture is kind of like fighting you, that's when you get in with the blending stump and you just kind of go over the, go over the thing and just push the graphite into the paper texture. So yeah, so once you push that into the paper texture, then you notice when you go back that you get like a much darker, much darker value that you can work in. So if you use a stump, I would finish with marks, right? You always, wanna, you always want the last touch to be your hand, not the blending stump. Because if you blend, blend away your hand, you've just blended away anything unique about your drawing. So that's kind of how this, this process works through about stage three or four. And then from here, you just spend many, many hours slowly approaching the value. And eventually you get there. Like I could work on this drawing probably for like 10 or 20 hours, incorporating background and stuff like that and just you know, and then you work a value a little too far and then you bring it back and you work it too far and bring it back, you know. So you just kind of do this back and forth play with the value and, and staying loose, not really committing anything until the very end until you're really happy with it, you know. Um, so what happens is basically you spend a lot, a long time with your drawing looking crappy like this and then like in the last 15 or 20 minutes it, just go, it goes from being like loose to being tight and sharp and awesome.